where before you know you got you could unlock uh, custom classes in later games, but now we have a brand new thing called Prestige Shop. So once you Prestige, you unlock um, uh, a Prestige token, and you will get one token for every time you Prestige in Modern Warfare 3. And now what you can do is you can spend these tokens in the Prestige Shop. Uh, that allows you to choose what your reward is. So you can buy extra custom classes if you want, buy as many as you want all the way up to a max of 10, or you can buy, unlock like custom uh, titles and emblems for your call sign. You can choose one weapon that you can carry with you to the next prestige and every prestige, which is awesome, because I don't think people realize that when you use the unlock gear, when you use your token on unlock gear, you can choose one weapon to permanently unlock. That way, every time you prestige from there on out, get it over yeah, you always have your claymores or your ACR, or whatever you want from rank one. That way, you don't have to work your way to it. Um, you can also do things like uh, sign double XP, so you can give yourself two hours of double XP, two hours of double uh, weapon XP. So if you want to rank up a specific weapon from day one, uh, you can do that. Uh, the cool thing is, the prestige shot will actually be open always. So if you have previous prestige tokens from other games because we're actually rewarding previous players who if you prestige in Modern Warfare 2 then you'll have a prestige token waiting for you in Modern Warfare 3. If you prestige in Black Ops you have one waiting for you day one in Black Ops. Um, so obviously you know prestiging is a, is, is a big deal. I mean why was there a reason that you guys wanted to raise the level cap say all the way up to 80? Was it that you were finding maybe that you know like the previous cap just wasn't high enough because people were just going so amazing or is it because maybe there's I find that in this one there's there's so many more challenges like early on you can if you play if you really want to min max those challenges you can really level pretty fast yeah. if you want to well what it was was it wasn't that there was that there is so much stuff to unlock in the game but what we really looked at was the curve it wasn't just about a matter of how many ranks there are it's how much of a grind is that curve to get to max rank and the max prestige? So what we looked at is how could we rebalance that out to a much smoother curve? So you weren't feeling like you were ranking up at a good pace and then it became like this uphill battle. So we wanted to smooth out that curve and the, the algorithm that we came up with to do that just led to a much you know, longer uh, rank progression. And then also adding in all the, the weapon ranking individually, there's so much you know, different ways to unlock stuff now. So if you're just joining us again, I'm Anthony. We're here with Glenn from uh, from Sledgehammer, as well as... Sorry, I'm spacing out your name. <laughs> I just I said it like Robert, sorry. I said it like five times. Uh, yeah, from, from the Infinity Ward. I'm living. Uh, uh, it's an insult to your, to your pride, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, so we're here and we're, we're seeing Team Defender, which is the map we're talking about, where there's one flag that you get to... That is a mobile flag that people basically have to hold to take, to take a point. Yeah. Mike's still pretty darn good here. Yeah. yeah. You also get additional points if well, you... Oh, look at that. Are there additional points if you uh, defend the flag carrier or, you know, kills obviously still matter right, and help yeah. your team out, but when you're holding the flag, it, your team earns double experience for kills, right? Correct? Yeah, exactly. Um, well, you're getting double points. Uh, right, not, so it's not, almost like... Not double XP. But oh, not double XP, yeah. sorry, but yeah, double points for the kills. So it's almost like a... It can almost be like you could use the flag carrier to bait people into a specific kill zone. Exactly, yeah. The, the, the key here is what I would recommend day one when you're playing Team Defender, don't worry about assault package, strike package, because you're going to be dying constantly in this game mode. Your kill death ratio is going to go to shit here. This is for the objective mindset player. So use your strike package because strike, or use your support strike package because you're going to be dying a lot and the support strike package doesn't reset on death. So it's going to allow you to grind up to those higher ones. The pro players you're going to notice very early on will always have the recon juggernaut in their support package because if you can get one or two recon juggernauts in this game mode, defending the flag carrier or preferably being the flag carrier, you're definitely going to dominate in this. Yeah, and that's actually you know you just you just called out something that I think is one of the cooler strike packages is is you know everyone <laughs> everyone likes everyone likes to uh, yeah right there is a great example of how effective the flag can become a killing field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think everyone tends to think of, of uh, you know, their strike packages and their kill streaks as just like being used for like straight up like kills. You know, this, yeah. I'm using this for for immediate gratification. And one of the coolest ones and most effective ones I've seen is actually when people call in a, a, a juggernaut armor yeah. and all of a sudden just become a mobile bullet sponge for their team. Yeah, I've seen that totally turn things around. I yeah, it, it, it's great in this mode if you're the flag holder. But if you're trying to get the flag, it's great for pushing the flag guy into your guys because. The Juggernaut will always show up on the minimap as like a diamond shape with a dot in it. So you'll know when a Juggernaut's coming for you and the flag holder will always run from them. 
So if you can use your Juggernaut to push him into a kill zone, that's your best bet. Um, another Twitter question from Lazrez. He asked, how do you address designing a map for multiplayer or spec ops? Like, you know, d I guess, you know, because obviously they share, yeah. they share maps, so he's asking, I guess, how is it that they vary in their design, I guess, you know? Right, well, well, 